For 500, Jeopardy greats are coming together for something new. What is another webisode edition of Unpeeled? That is correct, and it starts right now. Hello and welcome to another webisode edition of Unpeeled. I'm your host, Liam Crowley, and today I'm joined alongside by our television reporter, Patrick Gunn, to discuss a reimagining of the game show, The Chase, with several Jeopardy! champions, James Holtzauer, Ken Jennings, and Brad Rutter. Uh, Patrick, off to a hot start, 500 points already on the board. Uh, all kidding aside, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, it's not going to be enough to hold the lead against those champions, but no, I'm, we're hanging in there right now. Sure, and you mentioned those champions, and you know they're champions of Jeopardy, but now they're getting involved with the chase. So can you tell me exactly the premise of the chase and how these past Jeopardy greats are getting involved? Yes, yeah, so this is, keep in mind, this is the Jeopardy greats. Alex Trebek is unfortunately not going to be involved with this show in any capacity, but the premise of the show is pretty simple. The, the, those champions, Rudder, Holtzauer, and Jennings are going to be chasers or just experts, like a, almost like a final boss that other three other competitors each week in an hour long show are gonna be going up against answering as many trivia questions as possible within that said hour. It's gonna be hosted by Sarah Haynes of The View. And basically within an hour, whoever answers the most questions correct will be leading the ch against the chaser will be winning. So they, they, according to a video online that they could be answering up to 160 questions that's from a variety report. So, Basically, the competitors are each of the competitors are going to be trying to get more. It's going to be a rotating one week. It's going to be Holtzauer, one week Rat Rudder, one week Jennings, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, they're going to be rotating through seeing who can beat the chaser each week. Sure. So it sounds like we got a lot of great aspects involved with the former champions. But I want to know exactly what are the champions takes on this new show? How have they responded to getting involved? I mean, obviously they're pretty excited. I mean, the, the main area we can see that is from their social media accounts. Obviously, all of them took the Twitter to post about it. Brad Rudder posted a little eyeball emojis talking about it. Ken Jennings said that the boys are back, tweeted that the boys are back in town with a variety part. And Holtzauer had the most interesting one because he tweeted out a quote that he said, this is he jokingly said, this is easily the biggest news story of the week, which is obviously a little dig at certain other events happening going overall. And then he had shared a, a gif and said a quote, me realizing I have to share a workspace with Brad after all the, I'm not gonna say that word, I can't say it on television. So I'm just gonna say uh, memes or, uh, so but there was a little bit of a, some uh, trash talking going on from during the tournament of champions. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that dynamic comes going forward. And you mentioned the trash talk between Holtzauer and his opponents and Rudder specifically during that greatest of all time tournament. Now, even though they're not going to be playing against each other head to head every week, you mentioned how it's a rotating cast, essentially. How are these three going to mesh when it comes to the overall grand scope of this show? How competitive are we expecting them to get? I don't think there's going to be any too much of a bit, Ill, Ill will between them. They seem like they're all professionals, but they are pretty competitive. I mean, there was a lot, there were, I mean, Holtzauer, if you remember back from, uh, obviously this is several months ago, but if you can remember back to earlier in the year, there was a lot of stuff and Holtzauer is pretty entertaining. He likes to be, to have fun with his social media account and, and Jennings and Jennings won that tournament pretty easily. So may, I think there is going to be some little bit of a, a maybe sort of grudge match to keep winning each week and cutting putting up high scores and don't honestly don't underestimate Brad Rudder with all this he's maybe a little bit quieter on social media than the other two but he did beat Ken Jennings three times in earlier tournament tournament cha tournaments of champions so he's got some knowledge he just had a, he didn't have a great showing in the tournament of champ in the greatest of all time tournament but he can put up some high numbers if you give him a chance so you heard it here first the dark horse to watch out for Brad Rudder in the chase now Obviously, the, the champions are going to be heavily involved, but there are other competitors. So what will these other competitors have to do in this show to beat these, I mean, there's no other way to call it, geniuses. There are geniuses of trivia. Uh, short answer, don't miss. Uh, that's pretty much the phrase. I mean, you, the, you know the phrase, you come at the king, you best not miss. That's pretty much what you got to do here. I mean, just looking back at some old Jeopardy statistics from their runs. Ken, uh, James Holtzauer, during his original like massive Jeopardy run, had hit questions at a 97% accuracy. Imagine 97%, 3% missing. That is hard. And, and think about this. He was 95% on daily doubles. 
That means he was higher on regular questions. And then Ken Jennings during his original run was at 91%. So the whole tower was 6% better than that. And then if you're looking at more recent, the more recent statistics during that race ball time tournament, the three average accuracy was 90%. Jennings took that one. He was about 93%. Holtzire was a little over 91. And Brad Rutter was easily in third in that one, but he was still a little only under 85%, which probably, and he's probably going to be working hard to get that up a little bit. So these competitors are going to have to be working there, working hard to fill in those holes and make sure they can not miss questions. Wow. So, I mean, 97% accuracy, that's astronomical numbers. That's <laughs> wild to even wrap my head around. Huge. Hack gun, whenever we have you on Unpeeled, we, we like to have, have your hot takes. We want to hear your your main things to talk about. Pat's pick of the week. We always listen to you for what we should watch on TV. Now I want to do something a little different. I want to get Pat Gunn's keys to victory here. What do these competitors have to do, the ones that are not the three champions, to beat some of the greatest of all time? Look, it won't be easy to beat these guys. They're really, really good for a reason, but they all have been beaten, keep in mind. You, and they can, and there are ways that people can do it. First off, try and I know this is a different game show and it's a different format, but watching as many Jeopardy shows as possible to, that they were on. To first off, pick up their tendencies. What questions are they missing? What questions are they buzzing in quicker on? How and how the, how they play the game is important. And also, just not to mention, it's a great way to just gain knowledge. Like I mean, they're probably not going to ask the same questions as those runs, but like still, there might be some repeats, and it's going to help out overall with your knowledge base. Obviously, I mean, studying is it, it really depends where you're looking for because like Jeopardy is usually a little bit more of a little bit of everything. Well, for X, a little bit of everything, comparatively speaking here, but trying to fill in like the gaps that you have in knowledge so that there isn't really any weak areas. You don't really need to go quite, in, you're not going to have to, you like Citizen Kane, you might have to know it's directed by Orson Welles, but you might not need to know every single character name in Citizen Kane to really be a dom to get the questions right. And finally, just focus on every, focus on just answering every question, kick a question one at a time. You miss a question here, keep going. You can't, you just got to keep it going, keep working and keep just focusing on the next question, keep answering. And it's going to be tough. I'm not going to lie. It's a, really hard to beat these guys, but they, these three were unknowns at one point. Ken Jennings almost lost in his first show, actually. So it really just depends. They need to, they, they can be, they're beatable. It's definitely possible for someone to come in and surprise people. Wow. So you heard it here first. They are beatable. It will just take a lot of practice and a lot of effort. Unfortunately, that's all the time we're going to have on today's webisode edition of Unpeeled. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Citrus TVE and on Instagram and Facebook at Citrus TV Entertainment. You can check out our last week's full episode of Unpeeled on Citrus TV's YouTube page, which I'm assuming you're on right now if you're watching this episode, and check out the Entertainment tab every single week on Entertainment's Instagram stories. That's Tuesday and Friday. All your top headlines from the world of entertainment all in one place for even more content. For Patrick Gunn, I'm Liam Crowley. Good luck to all the competitors facing the Titans in this new show and we're gonna have to discuss further once you know if and when they get unseated <laughs>